bit. James, um, the spring for Tommy, what are you hoping to get out of it for him and what's it been like for him so far? Oh, it's been good. Uh, it's been good. Um, you know, mentally, I think he's done a really good job of being locked in, mm -hmm. um, asking a lot of questions, kind of developing in those areas, uh, which, which we all need to develop in those areas. I've been doing this for 24 years. I learn something every single day I come out in the field. That doesn't even count my playing experience. So I think we're doing a better job as a team of, of you know, practicing what we call championship habits and how we prepare and how we meet every single day. We use the example of our guys that went to the combine. It's amazing how many of them got so many positive reports for their football IQ and how they were able to handle themselves in meetings. So you know, it was a great opportunity to reinforce that's what they should be doing every single day. So when the time comes, mm -hmm. they're ready and prepared. And likewise, for Sean Clifford, what do you hope he gets out of the spring? They're kind of taking that next step. Yeah, same thing. He's getting a lot of reps right now. Um, Tommy's not getting the reps that we would like. So, um, you know, it. it Creates an opportunity for Sean to get a bunch of reps in practice, which is which is great. Kind of a next man up mentality across the board, um, and he needs them. You know, one of the things that I'm excited about is, I think for the first time that we've been here, we're going to have a three deep of scholarship quarterbacks that are available. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is that you know obviously Trace was available when we first got here, but we would have had to burn his red shirt. So we'll have three quarterbacks for the first time since we've been here that are available. Um, you know, to play without having to worry about burning red shirts and thing and guys that we think can 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 play. You know, can play and be ready and be prepared and at this level. You know, so um, I think that's really good. So you know, a lot of times you go the, go through these things and you get frustrated, um, but a lot of times they're blessing in disguise because this you know the that next guy on the list gets a bunch mm -hmm. of reps and now you've created a lot of depth. I've been you know watching that with basketball. You lose Mike Watkins, you know, which is a big loss. Um, you know, but the freshman, the freshman kid who's going to play football is a fifth-year senior since he's playing as a true freshman, right? What, what's his name? John? You know, yeah. Hit, you know, you know, look how much that guy's developed in the end of the season for them and playing in, you know, a really good situation. So, um, you know, they are blessings in disguise. You don't like to go through them, but um, I do think if you if you approach them the right way and you, and you handle it the right way, you know, it, it really can be a positive for everybody involved. James, do you think you have any clarity? I know it's early on the linebacker situation in the middle. Anyone standing out? Any aspect of it? Yeah, no, it, it's too early at this point. You know, I, I will say that I think it's obvious when you when you're comparing guys like the three freshmen that just got in here and Ellis. You know, Ellis has been here. He's played a lot of football. Um, you know, at that position, it just comes a little more natural to him. Where you got Mike as a great athlete, but he's still he's still figuring it out. Um, you know, Jesse moves really well. Um, you know, and he's played the position now for a couple of years. He's got an interesting, you know, progression. He, you know, he's, if you if you track uh, Jesse's kind of career, he started as a corner. If you followed him early in the recruiting process, and then moved to safety, and then moved from safety to linebacker. And every time I tell the story, then Jesse always goes and stop right there, coach. Um, but you know, <laughs> he, he he moves really well. And Tar Burton's lost a bunch of weight, um, um, you know, body fat, and he's moving better and. Um, you know, so they're three young, exciting, exciting prospects. But it's good to see Ellis out here getting some work as well. And then, and then we got all those guys that have kind of been developing, waiting for their time. You know, the Jan Johnsons and the Coops and, and guys like that. And we've all seen over the last couple of years here. You know, a lot of those guys have stepped up and had significant roles for us, like Brandon Smith, and played really well. So you know, um, I think we had a good group to work with. Daylon Darian's kind of an exciting guy. Can really run, it's long and it's physical, but still learning the position as well. So there's some, there's more depth than, than we've had there probably in a while. Has Tommy Stevens told you of his plans for after this semester? Uh, let, let's, I'm going to talk about Tommy here in a minute, but let, let's, let's kind of, you know, the majority of these questions have been about Tommy. Uh, let, let's, let's talk about something else, and then I'll address the Tommy thing here at the end. James, Coach, you got some good young wide receivers, uh, Brandon Pole, KJ Hamler. How have they been developing? I will address it. Just how they've been developing just, just you know, throughout yeah, the spring. Yeah, you know, uh, Mac Hippenhammer is, is, I think, one of the more natural football players that we got, even last year when he was redshirting on scout team and on special teams. You'd watch him do things, and it just, just came natural to him. He's got to get bigger and stronger. I think the baseball experience has been good for him. His confidence is built with that. Um, he did really well academically. That was part of the requirement. We said if you're going to play baseball, you got to do really well academically because that's a lot on your plate, and he did. Um, so I see him really growing. KJ's probably the buzz of the camp right now. Um, you know, with the players and the coaches, he's just so quick and fast. And you usually get a guy that's really fast or a guy that's really quick 
He, he's both. And he's still not as even efficient with his movements as he needs to be. Um, but, but he's an exciting prospect. And I'll tell you what, a little bit like I talk about Mark Allen, you, you wouldn't think Mark Allen's one of our best pass pro guys, um, and he is. And it's kind of the same thing with KJ. KJ is a very good blocker on the perimeter, which you wouldn't say that looking at him. You know, he's, he's obviously he's not the biggest guy in stature. So, um, you know, feel really good about, about those guys. And then Cam Brown, we just got to get him some more reps. Um, they're, they're the guys you're talking about? Wide receiver. Huh? We're, ta we're talking about wide receiver. Yeah, I said, are, there, are those Brown? the guys you're talking about? Sullivan. Cam Sullivan. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, Thank sorry. you, James. Yeah, we got question. two Cam Browns. <laughs> but I mean, was there, was there any other? Yeah, yeah. Receivers? Well, Brandon Polk as well. Just see yeah, yeah. Bra you know, the Brandon's kind of like, you know, like Coop and some of these other guys. A guy who's been here for a while and has had kind of little nicks and nags and things like that has held him back, you know, over his career. And this is, this is a huge spring and summer for him. We need him to step up big time for us. Um, you know, obviously we all know he could play in space. He's got to get stronger. Um, you know, um, and he's just, you know, he's going to have to take advantage of these opportunities right now. But he's a guy that we need to step up big time for us. And he's been in the program, you know, long enough and has got enough ability to do it. Thank you, James. James. How would you assess Ricky's um, preparation and his approach to spring practice? And what, do you, out of his development as an offensive coordinator, what are you most looking forward to seeing happening? I think that, I think the biggest thing with, you know, with, with Ricky, you know, somebody said it the other day is, you know, you know, he's too smart. And he works too hard not to be successful. You know, you know, when you have that combination, you got a chance. I think also me and him culturally, you know, uh, we've been together for so long. I think that helps. Um, I think he's got a very clear understanding of what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. Um, you know, obviously the last two years, um, I think we're really good uh, for him and for all of us, and and, and really for for our team from a confidence standpoint. So I think it helps when you're in a situation like this and you have transition. Um, it helped Trace McSorley that we made the decision that we made, so they're not all having to learn something new. But let's be honest, it also helps Ricky Ronnie that he's got Trace McSorley, a veteran quarterback, and a uh, you know probably the strongest offensive line that we've had since we've been here. So um, I think that is kind of ideal in terms of if you have to go through transition, that's probably the best way for it to go. You, know, you mentioned uh, earlier the, the younger linebackers, and I'm just curious, Cole Farmer, what, what type of role he's played and just how much maybe his role has changed uh, since he's kind of the old head. On the yeah, I would say probably the biggest thing with Koa is this is his year. You know, he's really, you know, we think has a chance to, you know, he's another guy that, you know, is new to the position, was a high school running back and, and safety, and, you know, we're, we transitioned to him to linebacker. So he's still learning but growing and, um, you know, excited about, you know, what he's going to be able to do. He's one of the guys that's going to test really well when that time comes. He's got to play like it. And he has, at this point, he hasn't really played up to his speed. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's what this spring and this summer will allow him to do. And I think him and Cam Brown can have significant roles for us on the edge. Um, two guys that have played a lot of football for us, but it's time for them to take that next step of being good backups to being, you know, you know good starters or dominant starters. Coach, Coach, what, was the, Coach what was the atmosphere like at the Garden last night and how cool is it to see the men's basketball program have so much success this year? It was really good. You know, I, you guys know, you know, I've, I've enjoyed, you know, kind of getting to know their team. On a personal level, and um, you know, um, watching them play the game, and watching watching you know uh, Pat coach them, uh, getting to know their personalities. Um, you know, it's funny because Josh, Josh's girlfriend is our babysitter. So every time he hits a big shot, I'm like, "That's my babysitter's boyfriend." You know, you know, making a big shot or a steal or whatever it is. So it's been cool getting to know those guys and watching their success. You know, they've worked extremely hard. Um, you know they've had some criticism, and they've battled through it, and and right now they're they're playing really good basketball. I mean I thought last night they played lights out, you know. So, um, you know, they got to finish this thing, which I which I know they will. But either way, you know they've won a lot of ball games this year, and it was great seeing all those people. And I hope, you know, I hope tomorrow night, you know, I don't think there's any reason why that place can't be sold out with Penn Staters, um, you know, because they need a home home court advantage, and they should they should be able to get a home court advantage with where. You know, I think they're playing Utah. Mm -hmm. I would hope that we got a home court advantage. You know, so that place needs to be sold out and rocking. Pat deserves that and has earned that. This team deserves that and has earned that. Um, that place needs to be rocking tomorrow night. I'm hoping to be able to make it. Um, it was a little hard because we didn't get back until you know, about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. And 
we had a staff meeting this morning at 7 a.m. So it was a great idea last night, uh, but not so much this morning. And you know, uh, Thursday you know, it could be a similar situation, but I think it's the earlier game, so the only game, so that helps. James, what are your thoughts on the proposed red shirt rule as far as when guys play four games before you burn your shirt? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a I think it's a really good idea. It's something that we've been talking about for a long time as coaches and trying to get done. You know, here here's the issue: is you can play three games right now and redshirt if you have an injury. And I think what happens is, I think there's concern a little bit that people feel like some people are playing almost everybody the first three games and then they're getting injuries and end up redshirting. So rather than getting into all that mess, let's just allow everybody to be able to, to play four games. And what I like about the four games is, you know, the model that I think we would use is you play the first three games to see who can actually do it and then pull the guys back that aren't ready, allow the guys that are to continue playing during the season. And then even the guys that aren't ready, you only play three games because the other problem that I think the rule is really important for is say you get to the bowl game. You know, uh, when I was at Maryland, we had a young man named Dominique Foxworth. Um, Dominique's doing really well you know, uh, you know, right now. But Dominique, his freshman year, didn't play the entire year and we had an injury. We had to burn his red shirt for the bowl game. You know, and I don't know if that's necessarily right or fair for that kid, but it was the right thing for our program. So now it allows you to play someone in a bowl game rather than, you know, putting maybe a guy that's not ready to play on the field because you don't want to burn somebody else's red shirt. And you put that kid at maybe risk. Maybe it's a kid who's not, you know, able to play at that level, but you put him on the field because you don't want to burn somebody else's red shirt. So I think it makes a lot of sense from a lot of different perspectives.